Well, with me is Dr Alex Allison, and we've got this news about the living wage that's being released on Thursday morning. A cock-up, an overspend, uh, giving people you know, the wrong sort of ideas of what it would be. Take us through it, can you, uh, please, uh, exactly what this entails to people who are on the living wage. OK. Well, again, there, there, there's two things to clarify first. There's the minimum wage, which is set out by legislation, which is calculated every year and normally goes through May Timwald in terms of the Living Wage Committee, looking at the labour markets. Um, and the Living Wage Committee is put together by employees and employers, and that's statutory. You can't go lower than that. Right. What the living wage is something that's been advocated by government, and it's a statistical analysis of the actual cost of living on the Isle of Man. So it uses a whole range of different calculations, weighted for the size of families and all sorts of aspects like that to figure out exactly how much an hour you need to, to earn to have the com a comfortable living on, on the Isle of Man. That, 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 that's what should be expected. Now, this is voluntary. This isn't compulsory. But what happened earlier on in the year, as we've changed to bring in Statistics Isle of Man, a new body to look at the statistics that government produce, is a historical in inaccuracy in the way this was calculated. They found that out in 2021 and then traced it back to other years as well. And so we have corrected that, we've identified it, we're being open and transparent about that. Mm -hmm. But going forward, we've actually made these quality assurance far more rigorous and we've asked for external validation from the University of Loughborough to ensure that going forward, both this year's living wage calculation is accurate and reliable, but going forward it continues to remain to be because one of the um, ambitions of this government is to, is to merge living wage with minimum wage so that people get a salary that they can actually live off of properly on our mm. island. And that's more important now than ever before. OK. Uh, did, did the government, for instance, pay people a living wage? I mean, are there people in there that no. have been affected by the, this? The, the government salaries aren't linked to, to, the, to the living wage, no. The restart and reskills scheme that have been promoted by Treasury provide um, support to employers based on the living wage. Mm. Again, because the living wage is voluntary, we're not aware of the number of people who were paid exactly mm. that figure. Historically, the, the living wage does seem to have been slightly overestimated. Do we know um, exactly what, it, well, you must do, yeah. what, what in the calculation, where was the cock up? Do you actually know? Well, it, 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 it's not necessarily a, a cock up, okay. Paul, although I would say that, wouldn't I? Yeah. What, what happened was that when, when you're looking at the cost of having one child, two child, three child, or four children, and, and the, the cost of doing that on the Isle of Man, um, the, the aggregation, the weighting of that went through the wrong calculation. So it overestimated the cost of having a family on the Isle of Man. They're the same way there was a similar um, anomaly in terms of the cost of heating your home. So the, the overall figure was slightly inflated um, going back to 2017. What we've done now is identify that, put that right, make sure that the calculations going through this year and future years are as accurate as possible, and we will continue to verify that using external validation as well. So I'm taking it, the, the, it, it, was, it was too much before. This year is going to have a quite a, a was it a downturn or a slight increase? The, the, it's not going to be as much as it probably most people. The, the, the published rate for this year is eleven pounds and five pence, which is a slight increase on last year, but perhaps not as much an increase as people were expecting. Of given all the, historical the times, interest. though, of all the times and, that people and, don't and get this I, money. I will apologise for, for the late publication of this. Well, this um, issue was identified when work started earlier on this year. It's taken quite a bit of time to pick apart these complex calculations, also verify them, making sure they're not made again, and get the external validation. So the living wage published now reflects very much the prices and inflation far earlier on in the year before um, the Russians you've invaded Ukraine. It's voluntary. We know that most companies pay more than the living wage anyway to their employers and value their labour. What government needs to do now, one, is to make sure the living wage going forward has that confidence and that validity, but to deal with the overall cost of living problems on the Isle of Man to make sure that, sure that those people who are vulnerable to the inflationary pressures we're seeing, particularly in terms of fuel bills, are supported either financially or practically by government and the third sector. Because anybody, technically, I'm, I'm guessing, and this can be going any direction, no doubt, upwards, needs at least about 10%, don't they, need to stand still? I mean, there's no chance of that going to be happening. I mean, what, what, one, of the, one of the problems with um, the inflationary pressures we're seeing is they are quite profound. They're affecting almost all individuals in different ways. 
We know that families and, and those with um, small children, that single parents, that women are more affected by inflation, particularly in terms of fuel costs. We know that people on low incomes are more affected because they spend a disproportionate large amount of their money on fuel than people on high incomes. But there's also that squeeze middle that we're more aware of as we go into this year that whilst they may have started off in the year being able to cope, are now going to be struggling with some of the um, quite significant increases we've seen, particularly in terms of energy bills um, and transport. What we need to do as a government is target that support, but also make sure we have a whole raft of measures to support the whole population. We can't support everyone. We can't mm. support every business. But we need to use both the third sector, um, advice, financial support where appropriate to make sure we can get through this very difficult time for all of us. And finally, just for checks and balances purposes, this can't happen again? Or, you know, you've got I, something I, in place now? I am confident that with the code of conduct of Statistics Isle of Man, with the measures they brought in, which highlighted this problem in the first place, with the culture of government, which is being open and transparent. And, and I'll give you that. I'll give you that, yes. fessing up to, the, to, yes, to, to, yeah. to, to, to this, as soon as it was pinpointed, pinpointed, we've changed the way that statistics operates for the Isle of Man government, but we're also getting external validation, not just to make sure our calculations are right, but going into, into the future, that they remain right and remain on, on schedule. Thank you.